what does it mean to sell out and what is the difference between having integrity and peddling our gifts and services for the sake of money or making a living or being useful and offering value to the world in the form of money work. This is something that I am currently navigating because I have a lot of conflicted feelings and beliefs and stories about money, about selling and ultimately uh, just questioning the whole transformation economy that we are seeing um, promoted everywhere. So it's not just the attention economy which is like this um, bid for people's attention in order to get your eye, get their eyes on things and sell them things. Um, the transformation economy beyond the experience economy is this kind of paradigm where you can't just sell people like a product anymore, you can't just sell people the experience that they will have from the product, you have to sell people a transformation. And um, I just feel like ultimately that this is a bit of a fallacy. Um, there are so many things that I see offering like, oh, if you um, do this, 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 if you do this course, if you do this program, if you buy this book, it's going to take you from like zero to hero in 30 days. This is the model. It's going to take you from um, unsatisfied, like blocked artist to um, six figure artpreneur in three months. So it's just like, all of this stuff that is kind of like dream selling and promising people that if they do the right things and there's a secret and there's a way to make money and ultimately um, I just find it troubling and I guess this is maybe a case study example of what I am not prepared to do to try and like sell my services as a creative guide because ultimately um, the whole the whole essence of sales and money and marketing and capitalism and consumerism is to create demand for a product or service via making the consumer feel lack, feel that they have a problem that the product or service can solve. and with the transformation economy by offering um, the promise of a transformation that the product or service will provide for them in their lives. And it's endemic, you see it everywhere, it's whether it's like um, a food stuff or a certain like diet, uh, it's like in clothing, in clothing brands, in technology, in the car that people drive, in the perfume ads that you see, like, you know, you're gonna be like so sensual and connected and feminine if you like wear this perfume, it'll transform you from like, you know, whatever to, uh, from, from like sort of grotty, unwashed, uh, worm self into like sexy woman. And of course, products and services, there are things that can do this for us and, um, I think like we shouldn't underestimate the value and power and of and transformative power of like personal rituals of things that we do like we get out and we we change our perspective um or we wash our hair or we have a haircut or we wear lipstick or whatever it is the equivalent for um whatever sort of gender put people feel like they want to uh perform in order to like become the person that they are um, and thrive or whatever but it's just like yeah I find it I just find it sort of like to me the logic of this is that the transformation the product the tra like to transform that that presupposes that we have free will and that we there is like a potential state ideal self that we can have and that there is a current state that is not ideal and like we're all always exactly where we need to be and I believe in meeting people where they are I believe that 
some people like do change, like they change habits, um, they change practices, but ultimately I think like most of us have quite a particular temperament and some people are just ultimately more conscientious, more focused, more driven, more ambitious, um, and they those people will just do their thing. Um, and then there's people that buy things that promise the, that if they do the thing that they'll transform their lives. And it's like we all have our place. Um, and I just feel weird at the moment about what is my role as a guide, as a creative person, what am I selling and why? And fundamentally, I think a lot of my beliefs about sales and advertising and the negativity therein are from ultimately my background, the ideology that I've experienced and grown up in, which has been, I guess, like, yeah, quite a working class socialist ideology on both sides of the family. Um, and then, at, I don't know, going to sort of art school and things, there's always like a radical agenda there and a radical ideology um, that's like very anti-capitalist. Um, ultimately, I remember this moment when I was on Art Foundation in 2010 and I found the um, magazine Ad Busters. I might even have it here. Um, I don't think I do actually. I hope I didn't get rid of it. But yeah, I found Ad Busters, which is a journal that is, yeah, I guess promoting uh, subvertisements. There's also like around the time I probably watched the film Fight Club and you know it's all this thing about the IKEA nesting instinct and the things you own end up owning you and the perils of consumerism so I feel like I was steeped in a lot of that ideology and became very anti-marketing, anti-capitalism, anti this process of creating lack, individualizing consumer um, issues and problems and presenting solutions in the forms of products and services that ultimately are probably things that people don't actually really need they wouldn't seek that out unless like they would like okay for example we've got a fire downstairs and the chimney needs to be swept that that is like me going online asking the neighbors who recommends a chimney sweep googling chimney sweeps getting a chimney sweeper in to, to sweep the chimney like that's got to be done it's a safety thing um but then like where's the line with that and like something that is you only think you need it because you've seen five ads and or you follow someone and like the the visibility um the visibility of them and the thing that they're offering is telling you that like ah oh, like okay so this person's interesting i'm magnetized to their offerings and and then they're kind of like posting things and ultimately I was a bit skeptical but now like all branding all advertising is based on repetition and if you can repeat something enough people will just start to want the thing so my ethics and feelings there are like well people aren't really like that's not something people really organically want it's because they think they think they want it because they've been exposed to the repetition of the thing which has then created the desire to have the thing or to emulate the person or whatever and it's just not something I feel like I want to engage in but also I would love to know what people think I'd love to know what other people's perspectives are whether this is just like my limited stories based on you know some shadows I have around not being able to just sell myself and know my value. Um, and the other caveat here, or the other side of the coin with this question of selling out and what our value is, is ultimately, like, I often think about, you know, what I could do, what I could do for for money, to to get to get more money, um, to make more money, to, to have a sustainable, like, income, basically. And I think about, like, oh, maybe I could have my you know, my uh, my songs in adverts or whatever. But then it's like, I don't, I don't really want my songs in adverts. I don't really want, I don't really believe in advertising. But then I'm like, is that just a moralistic thing? Because it is the way of the world. And people, like everyone's selling something. 
money talks and ultimately this moment we're in where we're hyper saturated with advertising and we are assaulted all the time on our social media feeds with repetition 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 of people who have paid to target you with their product just so they can sell something that makes a profit for them and your clicks and your membership or whatever like that's all part of the marketing process um maybe it's not a bad thing maybe i'm just like getting in my own way by saying i don't want to engage in that and i could just like make loads of money and be really happy and uh the other thing i heard recently was like okay yeah so you are doing the world a disservice if you don't sell yourself because ultimately you have things to offer and share um but if you don't know that and if you don't share them then you're depriving people of your gifts and I believe this in the case of music and and art and like we can't you know we don't know how many people our work could help if we share it and if it's visible um, but then I think ultimately some of my beliefs about these things come down to the fact that I don't know what like I don't know how to value my creative work and I think that's because our society, our culture doesn't value it and therefore I don't value creative labour unless yeah it's a kind of productised thing in the form of providing a painting for somebody or selling something I mean even all that like the pricing of things like that the question of value when it comes to individual artworks and it's all based around scarcity and market demand and yeah it's just really weird and I'm I'm finding it hard right now to think about commerce in relation to creation because creation is organic creation is flow creation is just what we need to do and the next step for people who are savvy is to find a way to make that pay and support them so they can live their passion, purpose, mission, do what they're good at and get paid for it and that's the ikigai um, model I suppose and uh, I, haven't, I haven't found the balance yet. I think all people who are trying to do work in the world with integrity and break, bring something that's of value to the world that's not going to do harm, to, to create something that's from their soul, to that moves them, um, and to offer something that people actually want to pay for, and for it to be something that you're good at and you enjoy doing, like, it's really hard. And um, there are lots of great guides around this. I mean, I could definitely guide this process. I'm better at guiding other people through it than I am figuring out in my own life, as many people will, will say. But, um, yeah, I find that there's a sort of like very masculine productivity focused you know sort of sphere of the solopreneur hustler culture even stuff like Cal Newport um deep work deep life realigning your life with your values even that kind of stuff like it's all on the masculine side and then there's this like feminine flow energetic sort of um magnetize and just do your thing and like get a team and be supported and find a like masculine frameworks and systems that are going to channel your work and ultimately um i don't know currently what my balance is with with that side of things and the ikigai side of things um but it's for each of us to figure out and i would invite you along to join this conversation and support and be supported by others who are also figuring it out because it's lonely it's hard as like a self-employed creative person trying to figure it out and uh yeah just sort of comment and join below to um yeah to have more connection around this thank you for watching